they control our everyday lives. They pass laws that affect where we live, what schools our children go to, if we have access to healthcare, living wages. And so they, they have power over lives, and they're the white nationalists who we need to shine the spotlight on. And, and I think it's one thing we want to say to our white brothers and sisters tomorrow who will be marching for White Lives Matter is that the governor is white. The senators are white. The majority of this legislature are white. Every mayor in Nashville is white. Why are you so threatened by the fact that we're saying that our lives matter? When you hold the political power, when you hold the economic power of the state, when you are the power in the state, and so if you're mad that you don't have a job, don't blame us. Blame these lawmakers here who are making it harder for you to access a living wage job than it is for you to access a gun. Blame these lawmakers here who are making it harder for you to access health care than it is to access a gun. Don't blame immigrants and refugees. Blame those who meet in this chamber and that chamber in January, because that's the white supremacist meeting that we need to come back to. him that he's still a good God, his word's still true, the message is still accurate, even though I can't explain this situation. And I'm going to trust the Lord that when I get to heaven, he'll explain it to me and then I'll be satisfied. Until then, I believe his word. I believe he's a good God. I believe the Bible's true. I believe it's his will to heal everybody. Can you say amen? amen. Sometimes that's all you're going to have. That and the ministry of the Holy Ghost to your soul to heal you of a broken heart because God can do what nobody else can do. And sometimes you have to quit asking why and just begin the healing process. Let me tell you a story. And I'll just give you the punchline. I was going to make it a mystery, but it's my wife. My wife was married before me. I'll never let her forget that. Um, I was actually the answer to her prayers. I'll never let her forget that either. You asked for me. She was married with three children, and they were happily married. They were a Christian couple, a very young couple. They did children's church, and they tithed. They were believers. They loved God, and they loved their kids, and they went on vacation. And as they drove back home to get back to work, they decided, we'll drive all night to get there. And my wife was driving their minivan. Everybody was asleep, and she went to sleep at the wheel. And the van went out of control. It threw her husband and her three children out, two, two of the children out, out of the van onto Interstate 40. Of course, she woke up and there's just disaster. And she's standing there and her husband is, 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 is near death, her middle daughter near death. The ambulance comes, they take them to the hospital. And she's hearing these voices, your life will never be the same again. You will never get over this. She goes to the hospital. They're on life support, her husband and her middle daughter. And she had to give the command to unplug the machine. Her life definitely changed on that day. And she believed that maybe she'd never get over this. Not only did she have to deal with the loss of a loved one, but it was two loved ones. Not only did she have to deal with the fact that they're gone and they're not coming back, but she had to deal with the guilt that she did it. She tells her story much better than I do, and maybe uh, we could have her come and do that because it's helped a lot of people get healed from a broken heart. But she dealt with those feelings. I mean, real wounds, real pain, real suffering, real grief, real sorrow should have destroyed her life. She should have lost her mind. She should have killed herself, and she thought about it many times, but she went to church, and she went back to God. She had nowhere else to turn. I mean, where do you go with that kind of pain? Who can understand that level of grief? There was no one that could. So she went to church. She went to Bible school, actually, and church, and she went to the altar every time there was a prayer line. She went to the altar and got prayed over, and she didn't care what 
the invitation was for. She needed the anointing. She went to Bible school and she didn't study what to do if you have a broken heart. What do you do if you're responsible for the death of your loved ones? What do you do if you want to kill yourself? She went and studied redemption. That's what's in my book. It's the message that'll set the captives free. I don't care what you're bound with. That is the answer. Jesus set you free. Jesus paid the price to deliver you. And he didn't pay the price to deliver you from fantasy worlds or to help you give you a crutch because you're weak-minded and you need it to get through life. He came to give a real answer to real problems. I mean real problems, real guilt, real sorrow, and real sin. And what he did worked. And as we said yesterday, it was one time for everybody forever. That's how well it worked. So she went to school and went to church and she gave herself to God 24-7. She prayed, she fasted, she read the Bible, she studied, she hurt, she cried, she prayed, she hurt, she felt relief. She went through the whole gamut of emotions. But to make a long story short, four years later, four years, we were married. And on that day, God put her broken heart back together and her family back together, and he created a brand new person out of her. So, well, why do you tell us that? Here's why. Because out of all the people I've ever met, she's the happiest, she's the least worried, concerned, guilt-ridden, grief-stricken person I've ever met. And it's not because she's not been through anything. It's because Jesus can heal a broken heart. Jesus can heal. Now, one of the scriptures that she used was Jeremiah 30, verse 17. It says, I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds. And we're not just talking about some sadness here. We're talking about wounds, real wounds. But I bring this up at this point because she told me this, and this was part of her recovery. She said, I couldn't begin to be healed of a broken heart until I quit asking why. Did you know that we could search the world over and talk to every counselor under heaven? And none of them could tell us why that happened. I can't explain it. She can't explain it. Her pastor couldn't explain it. Nobody can tell you why. But did you know at this point that really doesn't matter? At some point you've got to pick up the pieces and you have to give something to God for Him to work with. When I met her, I heard her story. In fact, I was introduced to her by a mutual friend and they told me there was this single widow that I would like to meet and I said okay I was a single preacher I traveled for years uh, as a young single person and I have to say uh, I felt like pastors wives felt like it was their duty to get every single person in the world married and so I'd been introduced to people before so I kind of knew the process and the pastor had a really good church. And so he said, you can preach in our church and meet this girl. I said, fine, well, let's set it up. So I was headed there and, you know, uh, I didn't know she had two kids. And uh, boy, was I shocked. I said, there is no way I'm single. I, I am not, I have a two-door car. I am not going to, you know, I, there's no way. But when I did meet her and I got serious, the first thing on my mind was, why did that happen? Why? I mean, that's a tragedy of epic proportions, and I don't understand. We don't believe in that. We believe in protection, and I still preach protection. I believe. I don't know what happened there. Why? And I went to God, and I said, why, Lord? Why would that happen? They loved you. They were your children. And, 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 he, and you know, the Lord showed me, a, he showed me this scene in heaven. And he showed me, me and him and my wife Carol and her former husband, who is a saint in our house now, you know. He was a Christian man. In fact, 
he had this premonition. And I, I can't explain all this, and I'm not, I'm not even going to try. But he told her, if something ever happens to me, you get remarried. Don't wait. He said, I want you to get remarried. I want you to have a husband. So I, I will be forever grateful for him, <laughs> to him for that. And, and, of course, I knew that. And it was like he was sending a message to me, you know, not to be intimidated. <laughs> you know. And, so anyway, I saw this vision. Of, of Jesus sitting down in heaven with me and with her and with him and Jesus explaining it all. And then I see us getting up from that meeting going, oh, oh, so your word is true. So, so you are a good God. So everything that you told us about, it is true. I understand now. And I thought, you know what? If I'll know that then, then I can have the faith to wait until then to know that. And we can go ahead and put why on the shelf and not go there anymore because it wastes time and it can't be answered it's not going to be answered and it's not going to help you get healed anyway if you knew why you'd still have a broken heart so you say Lord if you want me to know why you tell me if not I'm going to leave that and I'm going to get on with this process of healing and recovery and I want you to prove yourself to me that you can turn my mourning into joy that you can give me beauty for ashes Trust the Lord that he can do what he said he would do in his word because I can assure you he can do it. As I said to you, my wife is one of the most happy people in the world and it's not all because she's married to me. <laughs> Some of it is, but, 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 but I can assure you, if, even if she wasn't married to me, she would be one of the most happy people in the world because she had to stare grief in the face. She had to stare mourning and, and, and sadness and depression in the face and beat it down. She had to stare guilt in the face and overcome it, and she did. And once you do that, those enemies can't, can't bully you anymore. Amen. So number one, death. Okay. That's what she doesn't want. Michelle, is this the one you're passing on, Michelle? If so, this. is available extra large it's got reds teals whites mint green and pink unicorn 724 okay it looks like 746 has been claimed twyla 724 extra large this has teal in it extra large lene 724 just became available as far as i know that's what i'm being told hi chrissy all right back to no the blue and white oh no she still wants this one she said it's blue and white what else did Michelle Graham claim? Oh, she does still want that one? Okay. Yeah. Is it that, is it that Lindsay? Blue and white Lindsay? 715 Shirley. Is that it right there? 715. Okay. Never mind. We found it. I'll take that, please. So there's a Shirley she didn't Yeah. Want? So this one is what you're passing on, Michelle. <laughs> this is a size medium Shirley. Just became available royal blue with white polka dots. Michelle, girl, you shouldn't have passed on this one. It's so cute. It's so cute. Okay, so the Size one? medium, surely. But I'm a huge fan of polka dots. It's unicorn 715 to claim. Unicorn 715 to claim. All right, let me get back to requests. I, I might have lost it. I know Teresa Foster was who I was on next. <sighs> let me see. Money, girl. I know that. I know that. So you got to sell this stuff. You got to sell the unicorns. Teresa Foster Shirley Large. All right, here we go. We're going over Shirley Larges. Shirley size large, black with white, going to fit up to a 2XL. Shirley size large, black and white, going to fit up to a 2XL. $48. Unicorn 680 to claim. Unicorn 680 to claim. Size large cranberry with pink and black heathering. Super soft sweater fabric, definitely going to keep you warm. This fabric's amazing. It's going to be $48, Unicorn 682. 
Unicorn 682, size large Shirley. This one's my favorite and probably going to keep it if it doesn't sell. It's blacks, pinks, mauves, greens, taupe, and cream. Next was medium Shirley. Amazing. Taylor, I love you. Size large, $48. Unicorn 683 to claim. Unicorn 683 to claim. Size large. This one's only going to fit up to a 2XL, guys, because of the fabric. It's a... um. Kind of like a cream and navy mustards fuchsia. It's absolutely stunning. So sinking cute. Kind of like a um. What kind of fabric is this? You may know. It's like a hundred percent polyester. Uh, is that what you say? You just say it's polyester. Well, hold on. One hundred percent polyester dry clean only. Okay. One hundred percent polyester dry clean only. Or a hand wash in the sink and don't tell anybody. <laughs> right. Unicorn six eighty five to claim. It's gorgeous. Unicorn 685 to claim. The accordion fabric is black and white chevron. Going to fit up to a 3XL size large Shirley. $48. Unicorn 661 to claim. Unicorn 661. This is black and white. Going to fit up to an extra large. It's also got a chevron print mixed into this one. Size large Shirley. $48. Unicorn 684. Unicorn 684 to claim. What happened? The thing like moved. What are you doing? Uh, I actually hit my phone. Okay. Um, Royal Blue Solid Lace Size Large Shirley. You guys, how cute is this? This is my first time. I, it's my first time seeing a lace. Shirley, it is stretchy. Yeah. So that would fit. Yeah, definitely fit up to a 3XL. $48, 677 to claim. Unicorn 677 to claim. And then the last size large is this mustard canary in black sweater fabric. Super soft, you guys. Size large, Shirley. Going to fit up to a 3XL. Unicorn 642 to claim. Unicorn 642 to claim. All right, we're going to go over medium. <sighs> Catch my breath. Size medium, navy, reds, teals, pink, purple, Yellow's orange. I think I said yellow twice. Size medium going to fit up to um, an extra large. Unicorn 700 to claim. Unicorn 700 to claim. Amy, girl, throw caution to the wind. Stop feeding your cat for a week and buy that. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't stop feeding your cat. Um, this is black, neon green, blue, mauve, and white. Size medium, Shirley. Unicorn 710 to claim. Unicorn 710 to claim. Size medium royal blue with white polka dots, accordion fabric, going to fit up to a 2XL. Unicorn 715 to claim. Unicorn 715 to claim. Size medium black, teal, hot pink, orange, and white. Super cute, going to fit up to an extra large, $48. Unicorn 717 to claim. <laughs> Amy, don't give me the Amy, don't give me the angry cat. <laughs> Thanks, Melanie. Medium Shirley, 717 to claim. Size medium, dark teal, yellow, um, a brighter teal, purples, and navy feathers. You guys, feathers are amazing. Size medium, going to fit up to an extra large. Unicorn, 747. Look how cute this would be with what I'm wearing. Not my skirt, but my shirt. Oh, my Lanta. Look how cute that is with my shirt. <gasps> I might need this. Yeah. That's like real cute right here. If you stay here and don't go down. Because that's bad. Okay, size medium, so cute, Shirley. $48. It is going to be. Hang on. Hi, Stacey. Thanks for sharing. Unicorn 747 to claim. Size medium, dark purple, teals, mint green, pink. So cute. I know you already have shown the actual large names, but I somehow keep missing it. Trying to find one in the Cassie to go with it. Twilight Girl, I'll show you again. Unicorn 750 to claim. Medium Shirley going to fit up to an extra large. Unicorn 750 to claim. Size medium. It's a rose gold pink or dusty pink or mauve, whatever you call it, with white polka dots. A unicorn a accordion style will fit up to a 2XL. $48. Unicorn 750.